y'all share what cities are being considered for the joint bid? Yes. Go. Sure. So uh, for the 2027 uh, Women's World Cup bid, uh, we have put forward eight cities uh, in the U.S., five cities uh, in Mexico. Uh, Atlanta is the first stop on the tour for the FIFA inspection visit. Obviously, we're excited about Atlanta, given it's our new home for U.S. soccer and an incredible stadium here and, you know, will be a, a big opportunity to, to show the world uh, how much Atlanta and, and the, you know, North America, Mexico, U.S. love women's soccer. So the, the stadiums are uh, similar or same stadiums as uh, for 26. Uh, so the strategy of the bid is to set a new bar for investment in women's soccer. Uh, from uh, equal fan experiences, equal playing experiences, uh, and uh, an incredible opportunity to, to uh, you know, showcase what, what this means for, for the world. Are the majority of the stadiums multi-purpose, or are some of them soccer-specific stadiums? Uh, some of them are soccer-specific stadiums, in particular in, in Mexico. Okay. Uh, in, in the U.S., they are generally multi-purpose stadiums. And the city, can you share the cities, or is it still? Uh, have we... It's still open for discussion. Yeah, it's still, yeah, I was going to say, well, well, yeah, so, so that, that is actually a very important point that we have not um, limited uh, participating cities at this point. So uh, a number of cities who are hosting uh, in 2026 are very active in the process, and there are lots of ones who are not hosting in 2026 who are very excited about that. Uh, and so, uh, you know, we're, we're looking forward to, to uh, running that process through to completion. And do you have an idea of minimum or maximum number of stadiums you all want to include? In the bid? Uh, it'll be double digits between uh, U.S. and Mexico. Okay. Is Chicago, I know Chicago is one of those cities that uh, surprised a lot of people when they weren't part of 2026. Are they involved in this 2027 bid? Uh, there are a number of cities who are not in 26 uh, who have put forward interest in, in 2027. And in particular, uh, you know, they're excited about the approach of uh, how we're trying to elevate this uh, uh, beyond anything that's ever been done for, for women's sports. And how confident are both parties, both FMF and U.S. soccer, in this bid right now? Mm -hmm. I haven't let Mexico speak yet, so you guys <laughs> <laughs> We believe that we are a very strong and compelling proposition. We're incredibly complimentary. We're super excited to be partners. So, so I believe we're, we're going to make a good run out of it. Uh, and by the way, I'm Felipe Cardenas with the, with the Athletic. I guess for, for FMF as well, John DeLuisa said before, before he left uh, his, his, his role, that the goal for 2026 and beyond was for both national teams, men and women, to be in the top eight in the world. Are, are you in, in line to do that? And is this bid part of that strategy for, especially for women's football in Mexico? We are totally committed in Mexico to chase the U.S. that, that has done an incredible job. <laughs> so y the answer is yes. Okay. Friendly rival. Uh, whatever it takes to win. <laughs> what is the timeline for the bidding process and, and site selections? So the timeline for the bidding process, so we're, we're here meeting with FIFA today to go through um, different aspects of the bid, but the actual vote will take place in Thailand at, on May 17th of this year um, at the FIFA Congress. Can you break down what happened today or what will happen today, what the process was like? Yeah, sure. Um, so FIFA presented uh, and what they um, want uh, the FIFA World Cup in 27 to look like and to be. And then we presented on our vision for the World Cup um, for obviously hosted in USA and Mexico for 2027. And then we took a tour of the stadium um, to kind of show FIFA delegates. Um, we, although this is a 26 World Cup stadium as well, None of the delegates that are here today were actually on the stadium visits when we did this in 20, for the 26 World Cup. So this was all new to them. So showing off um, our stadiums and all that we have to offer and why we think that we can be the most successful, most economically um, viable, and the best World Cup for the 20, 2027. Why was it important to start in Atlanta? <coughs> um, I think many reasons why we started in Atlanta. One. Um, it is going to be U.S. soccer's new home. Um, and this is a very important city to me as well. Um, in addition, uh, I started my career here with the 96 Olympics and then also played for the Atlanta Bee here. So this city holds um, 
is, is very close to me and really means a lot to me. But this city has done so much for soccer. And look what Arthur Blank has done with Atlanta United. Um, and so they've welcomed us with open arms. And I think it was really important to start in our home city of Atlanta and really showcase what we can do and show them all the stadiums in the U.S. and as well as in Mexico. Arthur was critical to y'all getting to y'all coming to Atlanta, USSF. Has he made any pledges uh, for the Women's World Cup to, to try to help that bidding process? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're here today, right? <laughs> um, every step of the way, whenever we've asked Arthur Blank and Atlanta United um, and, his, and the Arthur Blank Foundation to help us um, to make these dreams come true for millions of kids around the world, um, they've stepped up every time, and this is no different. There's, there's, there's obvious reasons why we're kicking off the FIFA World Cup 27 bid tour here in Atlanta. Cindy, how, how important is she believes to help come to Atlanta to show process of Atlanta becoming the home of U.S. soccer, specifically for, for the women. What will you guys be I'm just going to hold on that and stay on 27 while we have these guys here, okay. and then we'll come back to that. Is that okay? That's fine. Yeah. Is this your first time in Atlanta at the stadium? Nope. 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 We've been hosted here several times. Yeah, I know you've, you've, you've had matches here, but I don't know if you all have been here. Yes. Okay. I'm Jason Longshore from 99 The Game in Atlanta, and I had a question just about how the partnership has come. I'd love to hear from both sides about how long this has been brewing on the Women's World Cup and why it's <coughs> important to have a partnership between the two federations. See, Sorry, partnership George. right there. <laughs> So as, as it's been said, we're certainly rivals on, on the pitch, on the field, but, but we've worked very well together, uh, coming together as a team for 26. And this idea for 27, a little over, over a year, it's been working together. And it's based uh, initially on the fact that we're one of the, the two of us are, have very successful women's uh, professional football league, which uh, speaks to the great interest we have in promoting women's football. Um, for us, it's an aspiration on, on, the, on the sports side to, uh, to become as good as the U.S. has been in, in women's football. Our, our, our team is certainly on the rise. Uh, and so we, we just think that together we can really contribute to promoting women's football all over the world. We think it's, it's, a, it's a great partnership for the countries, but, but for women's football in general. I'll just ask. I'll go ahead, please. please. Well, you asked from both sides, so. Sure. <laughs> Unless you want to do it, JT. Um, you know, obviously what gets a lot of the media is our partnership in 26, along with Canada, and now our partnership for 27. But I would say our friendship and partnership goes much beyond those two tournaments. Um, those are just the ones that are out in the public. Um, for us, it's about what can we do to help build up our two countries from the youth level all the way up to the international and professional level and what can we do to raise the level within CONCACAF as well and throughout the world and so I would say that everyone at FMF have been tremendous partners, teammates, um, obviously when we get on the field and we're playing against each other I think the match is coming up soon, a few know. hours. <laughs> um, um, <laughs> we, we're not friends when we're playing on the field, but in everything else, um, we are. And I, I could not say more about what great partners FMF has been throughout this entire process. Maybe someone from the Mexican Federation, if you don't mind answering in Spanish, um, Copa America will be here 2024 yes. this year. Um, obviously, this bid, what does it mean to grow the game in Atlanta specifically and, and how you see this city <coughs> the sport? Spanish-speaking You wanted to say in Spanish? In Spanish. We have an outlet, Telemundo, that, is, that we would like to hear. Perfect. Para the, the former Univision guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot swear, right? <laughs> <laughs> or I should not swear. So, so eh, para nosotros es un honor estar en Atlanta. Atlanta es una ciudad donde el mundo hispano es muy importante. Y, y estamos muy orgullosos de poder contribuir en la parte de México. Además, para la selección mexicana es un punto, cada año venimos a jugar a Atlanta y nos da mucho gusto venir. Anything else on 27 bit? I have one more. Yeah, um, go ahead, Just specifically about the idea with 27 and 31 and the bidding process, is this for potentially both or is it purely for 27? 
So currently we're focused on 27 and we're putting all of our efforts in to win the 2027 bid. See, this incredibly competitive. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about 27. <laughs>